Even though the prospects of replacing fiat money are tenuous at best, cryptocurrencies are of growing interest to policymakers, many of whom prefer the term crypto assets expressly because they aren't true currencies. And I'll adopt that convention for the rest of my remarks. Crypto assets raise, raise a host of issues around consumer and investor protection, market integrity, money laundering, terrorism financing, tax evasion, and a circumvention of capital controls and international sanctions. The bank's Financial Policy Committee is currently considering the risks posed to UK financial stability. And internationally, the Financial Stability Board will report to the G20 in Argentina later this month on the same topic globally. At present, in my view, crypto, crypto assets do not pose material risks to financial stability. In part, this is because they're small relative to the financial system. Even at their recent peak, their combined global market capitalization was less than 1% of global GDP. In comparison, at the height of the dot-com mania, the valuation of technology stocks were a third of global GDP. Now, authorities are rightly concerned that given their inefficiency and anonymity, one of the main reasons for the use of crypto assets is to shield illicit activities. This cannot be condoned. Anarchy may reign on the dark web, but in the UK, it's just a song that your parents used to listen to. Moreover, structural, <laughs> parents like me, once trying to be cool. Um, moreover, structural vulnerabilities in cryptocurrencies mean that they're inherently risky with extreme price volatility and poor market liquidity due to fragmented markets and highly concentrated holdings, which in turn facilitate manipulation and misconduct. These vulnerabilities are compounded by operational and technological weaknesses as evidenced by a series of major crypto asset heists. In addition, there's unease that the combination of these vulnerabilities and widening retail participation could damage the reputations of those financial institutions connected to crypto asset markets, and in extreme circumstances, even undermine confidence in the financial system itself. So authorities need to make some decisions. They need to decide whether to isolate, to regulate, or to integrate crypto assets into the financial system. A few jurisdictions have banned them outright, and some, most prominently China, have sealed them off from the core of their financial system. If widely adopted, however, isolation risks foregoing potentially major opportunities from the development of the underlying technologies. A better path, I'd suggest, would be to regulate elements of the cryptocurrency ecosystem to combat those illicit activities, promote market integrity, and protect the safety and soundness of the financial system. Indeed, the time has come to hold the crypto asset ecosystem to the same standards as the rest of the financial system. Being part of the financial system brings enormous privileges, but also great responsibilities. And in this spirit, the EU and the US are requiring crypto asset exchanges to meet the same anti-money laundering standards and counterterrorism standards as other financial institutions. And conduct and market regulators are considering how to classify crypto assets in order to determine the appropriate level and type of investor protections. In my view, holding crypto asset exchanges to the same rigorous standards as those that trade securities would address a major underlap in the regulatory approach. And as the SEC and here in the UK, the FCA have argued forcefully, so-called initial coin offerings will not be allowed to use semantics to avoid securities laws designed to protect investors, retail investors in particular. <coughs> Finally, prudential regulators like the bank's PRC are in the process of clarifying how the existing regulatory requirements for banks, including capital, apply to any future crypto asset exposures. So um, I trust you may have got a bit of the drift by now, gathered by now, that for many reasons, in my view, the crypto assets in your digital wallets are unlikely to be the future of money but that isn't meant to dismiss them. Their core technology is already having a major impact, and bringing crypto assets into the regulatory tent 
could potentially catalyze innovations to better serve the public.